Hi, this is Kayla from the real world Las Vegas. Go big or go home. You're listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And we're bringing this to you about a day later than we normally would because I said, Elaine, you have to watch The Walking Dead because we have to talk about this because it was insane. And you watched it, right? Yeah. Woohoo. Well, then we'll just jump right into there it. There is way too much buildup for what it was. Well, who do you think is dead? Um, I think Glenn probably died. So if you haven't watched the show, and I'm assuming everybody listening has, or this will make no sense, <laughs> you know, the, the entire time, the entire episode, they're trying to get around this bad faction called the Saviors to bring Maggie to a hospital somewhere else. They can't do it. They get brought out, lined up one by one, and then the bad guy, we finally meet Negan, just takes a baseball bat and smacks one of them on the head repeatedly, but you see it from their point of view, so you don't know who it is until, I guess, the season premiere next year? Well, is that next year or is that in October? October. I mean, next season, next I guess, yeah. is the way you look at it. Uh, it's funny that I saw Robert Kirkman say that the character is a very beloved character to everyone, which would lead yeah. you to believe it's not. But he also or lies Maggie. a lot. So he trusts. Yeah, it's like to me, it's not like Rosita because I don't think anybody would call he cares her about a Rosita. beloved. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said I would be a cop out if it was like Aaron. It has to be like one of the people that we've been with for a long yeah, time. Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, I, I also looked at what uh, showrunner Scott Gimple said. He basically said like this episode was the end of a story, and when we reveal who died, that's kind of the beginning of the next story because their death affects everybody. So like I think that drives the next season. So I'm like, who could drive that? I, I really think poor, poor pregnant Maggie. You Man, know if, what? I bet. So if it's the end of a story and the beginning of another, then Maggie would die. The baby, since she's about to give birth, would probably still be living, and Glenn would have to take – or somebody would have to take care of it. But would Negan be like, oh, okay, let's save this baby out of her stomach? I don't, I don't know. I, I imagine killing Maggie, who is sweet, and she's also pregnant, would be probably the most horrifying yeah. thing. Because I, cause I, I also read him say that the uh, opening scene for next year is going to be basically pushing boundaries and how bloody and gory it is and stuff. Then you're killing so, a pregnant woman. Yeah, and, and you're basically going to see like a flat head, you know, smack a head that looks. You know, a couple of weeks ago when Laura and I party down south smashed that that uh, watermelon. Yeah. That's what the head's gonna look like when we come back and see it. Brutal. So it's it's gonna be tough. And what did you think of actually meeting Negan? Now he kind of looks like George Clooney. <laughs> well, you know, it's Henry, it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He really became famous as playing. I think it was Denny or something on the first second season of uh, Grey's Anatomy. But it's funny. This is actually, as far as I know, his fourth comic book character that he's played. He was in this movie called The Losers a few years ago with future Captain America, Chris Evans. He was the comedian in the movie version of Watchmen, which is considered one of the best comic book stories of all time. And even just a few weeks ago, he played Bruce Wayne's father, Thomas Wayne, for like a minute in the Batman versus Superman one. So this guy... Okay, you know way pedigree. too much about this guy. <laughs> well, well, he's also currently on the show that I love. You know, I've talked about my love for uh, The Good Wife. I said it was very nice of The Good Wife to be off last week so I didn't have competing uh, competing Jeffrey Dean Morgans on at the exact same time. So. Oh, my goodness. But uh, he's good. I think he did a great job in the part. I mean... The line where he's like, you know, it's pee pee pants time, <laughs> or, or it's gonna be pee pee pants. That's directly from the comic book. Were you afraid of him? Were you scared when you saw him? So it's 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 different than the comic book a little bit. He was a little more softer spoken, which can be terrifying in its own right. The way softer he spoken does in a comic book. Okay, maybe I need to start no, watching no, comic. No, or reading no, no, comic no. In the, in the okay. show, I think he was softer spoken because in the comic book. Pretty much every other word out of his out of his word is like an F word, oh, you know, really? so to speak. He's, he'll even be like those effing effers, F, what the F? That's effing crazy. So you can't do that on TV, even though it's on AMC. So I think they toned him down a little bit, but you know, sometimes the fact that he's playing it a little more subtle, I think, can be a little more terrifying. You know, he he seems like a guy who's just like, here's a deal, here's what's gonna happen, deal with it. I thought I was picturing some guy that was like a lot bigger, a lot crazier, like you know the Mortal Kombat, the guy with like six arms and like comes out and has like Grow yeah, or... has his head shaved and like into a mohawk and he's just like ah. You mean like right before he smashes somebody in the head, he's gonna go finish him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know when we're done with this podcast, I'll send you a picture of what Negan looks like in the comic book so you can get a sense of 
of, of how that's going. Um, also, did you did you think? Because you know, it's funny. It was almost like a afterthought in this episode. The people who saved Carol and Morgan. Do you have any thoughts on that? Eh, not really. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> bored. Like the beginning of this season was really good, but it just got really mm. boring. Maybe it's just me, and I need more action in my shows. But Maybe. there just wasn't. There's was so much more build up. And with a zombie movie or a zombie show, you need to have that action, especially for the season finale. Well, if you want to know, the people that save Carol and Morgan are from a place called uh, The Kingdom. It's In the comic book, they're like, basically pretend like they're living in Camelot or something. They're all, there's like a king, and they're like, oh, hello there, sir. Yeah. And his name is Ezekiel, and he has a pet tiger. If they can put a pet tiger on The Walking Dead next season, I think you got to come back in. Well, I will be back in if there's a pet tiger, but as of right <laughs> now, it's just a lot of buildup. And now we have to wait six more months, so I'm not really happy about this anticlimactic ending. I didn't think it was funny in The Talking Dead that Robert Kirkman on there, and he was talking about if you had never watched the show up until maybe like this season or last season, you would think that Rick is like a psychopath. He really <laughs> like he, Rick's nuts. So, so... God, he's so hot. Oh God! But uh, it's funny that you know Negan seems like such the villain. But you know, if you watch the show from their point of view, maybe Rick's a villain, and they killed their people, man. I totally agree. I totally agree. In the real world, last week, uh, you know, Kayla's interview is already showing uh, what's what's to come. She mentioned that things were not going to last; they're not going to go well for a long time with her and Dion, and it's already falling apart. That was actually a really good interview. If you're, if you watch, actually, the, you know, if you watch the show, yeah. this is probably one of our best interviews in terms of getting information that's really, really relevant to the show. And I would say, if you hadn't listened to the, the interview yet, listen to it now. Should. But if you're listening, it was last episode. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably listened to last one. But if not, go do it right now. Kayla's awesome, and she gives a lot of a lot of scoops. But uh, you know, Dion, 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 Dion. Dion. D own, <laughs> I should just spell it out. D E E dash O W N. So I remember D own. He's kind of over Kayla. Really doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. And Kayla kind of doesn't want to admit that she likes him. Like she'll kind of say like, "Oh yeah, I, I want to like bang him and stuff." But I, obviously, no one likes being when a rejected. guy acts like that. Though I'm sorry, and I'm like I'm a girl that I feel the same way. Like I want him more when he is pulls away that much. That's why you women are so stupid. You like bad guys who treat you totally horrible. Do. And then when they treat you like crap, you're like, I want them more. He has that like je ne sais quoi about him. And then he just doesn't you... care at the same time. And you're just like, wow. Um, you know, I want to marry my... you. I want to change you. Dion was on my my crap list, for lack of a better word, right now at the beginning. And, you know, he... He's, he's basically a rocket scientist. He's so smart because he decides to tell the girl that he has back home that he banged Kayla. Ugh, well, he's just I mean, I guess it on the table for when she gets there. Yeah, and she's mad because she said the one thing I told you not to do was to sleep with someone. <laughs> in, in my opinion, if you have to tell your significant other not to bang someone on national TV, <laughs> that re that relationship probably isn't going to last. Uh, who knows? They might get married in ten years. You just don't know. Yeah, and you know, the more I think about it, if you got on biggest or not biggest, but if you got on Big Brother, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ron would be like, "Don't sleep with anybody." On there. I'd be like, "It's for my game." <laughs> yeah, I gotta do it, man. It's it's. Just, do you want that million dollars? That five hundred thousand dollars? Whatever the hell you want. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and I was laughing towards the end of like that whole segment because Kayla kept saying awkward like over and over this is so awkward it's so awkward and mtv also has a show called awkward i felt like it was cross promotion or something. you think that's why they did it i don't was but there it was a just commercial funny. in there because i don't watch commercial i do dvr they usually do have because awkward was on tuesday nights but they usually have i think commercials during the are you still watching episodes. awkward i am i think it's the last season i'm just kind of sticking with it till they've the been end. in high school it's... for like 10 years now <laughs> no, they're, in, they're in they're in college now it's a good show and, uh, awkward's a great show <laughs> Everything has changed. You should just stick with it. Why not? Well, you know, I, I would say I, I don't have enough TV to watch, but I have too much TV to watch. So maybe I should just start dropping these shows that I don't. Watch. <laughs> um, also, in this episode, this, this was a big episode, and not necessarily in the best way for Jenna. So Jenna has this guy who's her boyfriend, but he's not her boyfriend. But basically, he's her boyfriend. You know, he's, he's back home. His name's Austin, and I would say he sounds a little jealous is, is that a good way to put it yeah, I, I don't know their whole backstory but would what did you think about the stripper and how he pulled her up on stage and gave 
Dan. So do you think that was out of line and she should have been so kind of victimized he or? He basically went to what is it, like Thunder Down Under, one of those things with those landing creepy strip. <laughs> And, and I will tell you this, by the way, just a side note, that male strippers are way creepier than female strippers. And I say this because I'm a man. <laughs> we're scumbags. Like, if you go to a strip club, you know, I mean, maybe if you're trying to get money out of you, but the strippers generally aren't going to sleep with you, where these guys are probably scumbags and they'll probably bang you. I, I don't know. I just, They'd probably bang you, know, you. Isn't that the whole point of it, though? You don't want to think that they're gay. You want to think that they actually love you. Yeah, but you don't want them to actually go through with it. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I don't... It's a tough thing because CJ kind of like, oh, yeah, this guy, like, you know, you kind of like this guy, brought him over. She yeah. got brought on stage. She was humped all over on stage. And I mean, I almost want to say that if you, I, I don't want to like blame Jenna for this, but it, if you go to, go to that kind of place and stay in that place, that, that stuff's going to happen. Okay. That's just like, so that's your view is if you're put yourself in that room, in that situation, you're not the one being violated if they pull you up on stage. Well, she kind not, of made her seem, herself seem like she was a victim, and then you have this stripper on camera, like essentially victimizing her. Well, it's hard because you know she's very religious, and I think that's part of the problem. And she did say she didn't want any part of that, and they kind of egged you know, her roommates, kind of egged it on. So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm blaming her. And no, that's her I know fault. it's kind of. But, a but I'm weird... saying it's. I mean, to me, I feel it was overblown. No matter what, you could be pissed off about it, but you know, in the end, you survived, and it wasn't. You know. It, it was quote unquote all in good fun. So I, I I don't know, but it was blown up because now she was afraid that Austin, her boyfriend, not boyfriend, was gonna be mad. Which I don't understand why she could be mad if it's not actually her boyfriend. And uh, after she tells him, he kind of gives her the cold. She he kind of gives her the cold shoulder, and then she goes like total psycho on him. What did you think about those emails she was sending? Him? Did you send any emails that that's the guys when you were in high school? <laughs> uh, or, did I uh, high school? I did it before today. Ron. I mean, emails. I guess. So I don't know if I did emails. I think I did more crazy text messages. From those emails she was sending, I don't even remember what they were. I just remember they're crazy. I would imagine <laughs> she had, had pictures of this guy, Austin, like cut out all over her room, you know, like on the walls. I did that too. I draw pictures of him actually in high school. Oh. Even creepier. I'm just saying that Austin either sh should have got off the pot, to use the language. You know, either you're her boyfriend, and then you can get maybe a little perturbed with these kind of things. Or you're not her boyfriend and you can't get mad. I do think production did a really bad job, though, of giving us the backstory on her boyfriend. They didn't really cover it that much. And then all of a sudden there was an issue and she had this boyfriend. So production, if you're listening, give us a backstory in the, What's going on? Yeah, in the previous episodes before you actually try to create a storyline. You know, you, you got to follow the Kayla model or rule. Break up with the guy before you go on that show because no good comes from dating somebody and being on that show and then go out and getting drunk and hanging around with good looking people constantly. And you, you're going to bang somebody. You're going to at least make out with somebody. It's just, you know, it, it stinks, but it's, I would rather someone break up with me and see it on TV than to still be dating them. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, everybody watch my girlfriend on TV. Oh, wow. She's making Banging out everybody in their, <laughs> yeah. and their grandmother. You know, one of the, one of the most bittersweet parts of this show is it has to do with CJ. It was her birthday. And, Happy birthday. You know, she, yeah, she really missed her mom. I mean, it, it brings back a lot of memories of not having the family around after what happened. And I say it's bittersweet because, you know, obviously it's sad that her, her parents and her mother especially isn't around anymore. But it's sweet to see how her roommates really – they've really been there for her whenever this has come up. And they've kind of, you know, been a shoulder to cry on or just to listen. And I'm not certain that's something we would see in other other seasons of the show. No, not at all. And the fact that they've bonded so fast is a good thing. But you have to remember what Kayla said. And we're going to, we should reference her interview throughout the season as we cover the real world. But she said that basically she doesn't really talk to them anymore. You know, it happens. she's not texting CJ. As much as they bonded, I think the only person she's tight with now still is Sabrina. Well, I don't think she insinuated that they were not friends. No, no, or anything. no, they're think, not. They just you know, you, haven't you're just kept in touch as much as her. And yeah, you're you're close. You get closer with some people than you do with others. It just happens in life. But um, when you're in this kind of experience, I think emotions get to be at an all-time high just because there's cameras everywhere. You're with each other 24 hours a day. You're finding out all of the stuff that's going on in people's lives, and you're having all this happen. To you. You're having shared experiences. So I understand why it happens in the moment, but. 
you know what, whatever's happening now, whether they're close or not close, I was happy to see that everybody's just there for her there. Because you know, CJ seems like a rock star. Oh, I, I know. She seems awesome. And to really to end this episode, it was, so they went on these AT. Have you ever ridden ATV before? Yeah. It's like a quad, whatever you call them. And I swear Jenna, it was basically Wiley e. Coyote stuff that she fell off her own ATV then it ran over her type thing. And she seemed fine. She popped back up like a champ, no problem. Then a few days later, she was hurting, and uh, she they wouldn't let her do the next you know mission or whatever. And since she's not being able to go big, the question is, with the cliffhanger, does she have to go home? That's a good Ooh. question. I don't know. I don't think she's going to have to go home. But well, I think I read somewhere that they're going to – the roommates decide whether she goes home. But you know what? Not going big, to put it you know for, for lack of a better term, it's different than if you're afraid to do it or you don't want to do it or like – they are doctors are not letting you do it because you're injured. You know, that's that's two different things in my opinion. Yeah, um, but it's like the challenge. You end up going home if you can't do it for some reason. Or Survivor. How many people yeah, we, got or somebody got booted last time in Survivor? So and Neil. It's whatever they decide to do, it's gonna be have precedence and you have to really, you know, be the same to everybody across the lines. You can't pick and choose what you do. In my in my humble opinion. Totally agree. So be careful what you do because it might bite you in the butt later on. Uh, moving on to the Vanderpump Rules reunion. I mean, this is, you know, we always say this is a show that never it ends. Never just goes on forever. Ends. There three was a three-part three part reunion. reunion. Like, what show has a two-part reunion? <laughs> Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and those ones. They have three-part reunions. So, so I just wrote down a few things that I got from the last episode. And I think James, a lot of them kinda... James, James. Yeah, so Jax and James, I think the hatred between them, that's real. Jax is always threatening to like beat the crap out of James. And then James is like, I'm gonna punch you in your fat throat or something. It was just Seriously. I mean, James I think James has just become a master at trolling people now. He just knows how to get these reactions. I can't tell if he's really a douchebag or whether he just knows how to be I, a douchebag. I think bag. you're right. Just... I, I think it's both, but I think he plays it up. Ooh, your veins are popping out of your neck. <laughs> and of course Jax is sweating as always, because that's what he does. And uh, Stasi really hates James. And I mean she's calling him out just for the way he ta treats women. You know, if you ask me for this season, I think Stassi's a big winner this season. She's Why? made a pretty good comeback. I think since she's come back, she's, you know, had her tail between her legs. She ate crow. And I think it seems now that people are kind of accepting her. I mean, hell, Jax is accepting her. And they had that relationship, you know, in the past, how negative it was. I, 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 I've never been a fan of Stassi until this season. I'm on Team Stassi now. You're on Team Stassi. I thought it was interesting how Stassi was talking trash to ariana was it to her about ariana or to ariana it was to her when they were talking about her complaining about the stand-up comedy and the the sketch comedy stassi really got in ariana's face and was just saying she was such a biatch and all this stuff and i couldn't believe she was actually saying it i mean stassi i like ariana trying to fight people you don't like ariana no, i said i like her enough but that whole thing with the stand up, like, oh, you're you're doing not, it wasn't stand up, what is it? It's the uh sketch comedy uh, or sketch comedy. Like, like you you know, you, you, why are you doing this? If, I'm if really serious about my sketch comedy. Isn't that I, like an oxymoron? Aren't you supposed to be laughing at sketch comedy, not serious yes. about it? And, and and our former interviewer, uh, Robbie Chernow was was very big into this kind of stuff too. Yeah. I think he still is. And you know, and and, and you can do things like okay. If I go outside and play a game of basketball with my friends, am I going to have like LeBron James yelling at me that like I'm not taking it seriously? Like there are different <laughs> levels of things you can do. If that's why like there are like uh, open mic nights, if you want to go and like you know be a comedian and try your stuff out because you think it's fun, yeah, it doesn't mean you're crapping on Chris Rock, you know. <laughs> you can... and by the way, Ariana is no Chris Rock. Oh my just... gosh! You know there are many things you can piss off with Kristen about. But that's not one of them. No, choose your battles. And we should go on YouTube and find something, some clip of Ariana on there doing sketch comic. Because I'm sure it exists out there. I'm sure it's so funny. Um. <laughs> I'm sure it's like, oh my God, she had to go to school for that. Mm -hmm. If you're not yep. taking a sketch comedy class, you're not serious about it. One of the other things I thought was really funny from this reunion, I actually think that Sandoval likes James. Did you? I do get did, that did we know? Did we know before this three-part reunion that James was going to move in and be Sandoval's roommate until Kristen started dating him? No. Like I was under no, the impression yes, that they yes, didn't really know yes, each other. We did. We did. did we? we did earlier. We did. I think last season or whatever James, whatever season it was that James was introduced to 
the whole. I just remember them having that like Instagram war and him being like, "I he drive a Honda or something." <laughs> remember that yeah. the guy of the fight, but I, you know, I, maybe I wasn't paying that much attention back then. But I just, it, whenever James would kind of be like a, a douche, I think Sandoval kind of was just like smirking. I think he, I think he's in on the joke too. I, I don't know. They, you kind of see the reality of what's going on in these re- interviews or in well, these. Let's uh, get readings. him on the podcast because that's one thing I would like to talk to him about. And I think which one? Like... White Kanye? <laughs> no, no one. I don't. Sandoval. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have Sandoval on. He's a voice of reason to some extent. Um, I think they like Lala. Well, I mean, I think the the girls don't. I think the guys do. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think Katie likes her at all. And uh, as we saw Lala when they had to use the subtitles, she does not like Katie. But, you know, Lala, I mean, to a certain degree, I think she's doing what James is doing is that, yeah, she's just being herself, but she's not afraid to just kind of be a little over the top because it gets you on TV. And, you know, who gives a crap? You know, if you got it, flaunt it, I guess. Let the liquor help you get up on it. I like that. I think I think she's going to – because, you know, when Lala popped in there, we thought she was going to be like that girl the season before that comes in and then she's gone the next season. I think Lala's going to stick around. Oh, yeah, she definitely will. She has a great personality for television. Um, so she was crying because her ex-boyfriend no longer talks to her, the guy that she was in love with. When? So when? But the, did you catch the reason for it all? No, what, what's the reason? The reason was is – Somehow, some way, I don't know if Lala told James or what, but that Lala had tossed the salad of her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and James went around and told everyone that Lala tossed a salad. Whether it's true or not, I'm not sure, but she basically essentially said that it ruined his reputation, even though no one ever said his name. And we're not talking about what you eat before your meal at dinner. <laughs> Or at the if end anybody, of your dinner if you're French. Yeah, in case someone didn't get that. I, I, why does she stay with James? Like, she gets mad at him, then she, like, just forgives him and, like, goes... I don't... They have a weird... Like, she's, okay. They've slept with each other once, but they must be effing around or at least making out with each other often. No, it just seems so weird. I think it's more of a, we're both in Hollywood, we're both almost on this show. Let's try to stay on the show. If we're tight, then we'll probably... They both... Everybody hates both of us, kind of, you know, on, on, for the people on the show. Yeah, exactly. And, uh... The last thing I want to talk about, you know, I don't even think there's anything to talk about. It's really just a statement. Everyone seems to agree that Brittany is way too nice for Jax and way too good for Jax. I totally agree. I feel like he's even tamed, Jax. tamed himself, though. He's not as crazy as he used to be. Let's see if he makes it through an entire next season still with Brittany yeah. without cheating on her that's or what doing I, some That's horror. Real, the real test here. Yeah. I mean, since Stassi, we've seen him just go through women like, like Kleenex, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you have a cold. <laughs> now, um, we've got a couple things to talk about here at the end. Maybe go a little quick through some of these. But uh, did you get a chance to watch the finale last night of the O.J. Simpson show? I just watched it before we got on the podcast. Oh, fantastic. So, we can't, so to me, this was an, a masterpiece. I love this season. To me, Courtney B. Vance and Sarah Paulson have got to be shoe-ins for Best Actor, Best Actress for the Emmys for Best Phenomenal, phenomenal. Totally agree. It was... Ugh. Oh, oh my god! I can't even. Ex- you know, John Travolta was a producer on the show. You know, that's probably how they got him on a little extra money in the pocket. I wish he would have dyed his hair slightly darker so he would really look like Shapiro. But God, their acting was so great. Ugh. Why? I thought they kind of crapped on Shapiro for most of the show, but then at the Thank end you. there, I thought he was being righteous when he's like, "Why would you bring Farrakhan here? They hate Jews and stuff." <laughs> and and, and Lee Bailey's like, "Suck it," but whatever. <laughs> Shapiro, Shapiro got the last laugh. He's, he did. You know, he wasn't disbarred. He's still alive. <laughs> Most of the other ones are either dead or F. Lee Bailey's screwed. I mean, or I guess they Barry have to Sheck leave L.A. Like, or yeah. had cancer uh, or something. It's, it's so funny that Barry Sheck, you know, did the innocent project project and got people off when he got, you know, somebody who. Let's just be honest here. O.J. did it right. I mean, we all think that. I think. I think looking back on it, even though it was a black white issue at the time, I think it's safe to say that. 95% of people probably believe that he did do it. Now, whether they think he should have gotten off or not is a different story. You might have different feelings based on your demographic. But I think looking back on it, we can all say that. Although I do have two British friends who were very, very young at the, at that time. I think they were like five years old. So when they think back on it, they think he was innocent just based on what they heard. 
because I was in seventh grade yeah. when this happened. And seventh grade me was happy he got off because I was an idiot. Like I thought, like, oh, he was a naked gun and he got hurt. It was funny. Ha ha ha. Yeah. But but I get pissed off at my old self doing that. I mean, this was pre CSI, so the general public had no idea what the hell, you know, uh, DNA was or any of this stuff. And what made me really mad at the end of this show, and you know, I'm guessing they this was a TV show, but they're going off of real events, that people were super happy he got off. Now, even if he didn't kill Ron Goldman himself. and uh, Nicole Brown, he still it's not up for debate that he smacked the crap out of her repeatedly. You know, he's a he's a wife beater. That's not in question. So why are people like why would people still love him? That's what I don't get. I'm still wondering how he got thirty three years for armed robbery and kidnapping of memorabilia. Well, it was people as well. So I mean he, I guess if you kidnap somebody I, mean, I don't think did, was like, he kidnapping people? Well, I, I was reading something today saying that he went in there and locked the door and wouldn't let them leave and that, that technically is, is not considered kidnapping. In maybe in yeah, Nevada or wherever he was when it happened, I think maybe that's kidnapping. But to me, kidnapping is like, you know, you're in a white van and you're taking kids on the side of the road as they walk to school. You know, they put they put Al Capone and Alcatraz for uh, for IRS fraud, you know, tax fraud. Yeah. So they get you for what they can and they throw the book at you. I think you're right. And he's up for parole in 2017, which is pretty interesting. But back to the actual case. God, I mean... They did a great job with this show. I just can't even I can't get over how how like um like big of a surprise series this was. I, I wasn't was expecting this. I, I thought it was gonna be stupid as hell and corny. Me too. Not what we got. I was kind of hoping at the end they were gonna find him guilty and they're gonna be like, psych alternate universe. You know? <laughs> like, like we were watching something that because everybody knew he was gonna get off. So then if he could be found guilty, I would have been like, Oh my god, that's crazy. I love how they're like Jenner created a billion dollar empire it's like oh my god you know this this show was very kind to robert kardashian they kind of showed him as someone who was just kind of blindly following his friend and believed him and then realized he got a killer off i wonder how accurate some of that part is i, I don't mean, know and a lot of those conversations between johnny cochran and the lead prosecutor marcia yeah i mean how much how much of that was actually real like going out and having a cigarette or on the veranda like made me i just i don't know if that ever well, happened was it well as they said lance you know, the judge was the only person not to write a book so i bet you were able to take bits and pieces from all their books on events that have happened and kind of mashed together one thing it really made me dislike johnny cochran to be honest with you not to speak ill of the dead but come on he the way he, he treated chris darden I mean, that's just messed you up had and to again win, though i mean you really had to win yeah, but he made it personal. And it's funny we're talking about the the real life events, but we're doing it through the through the spectrum of watching a TV show that was fake. It was a great and it's just show. Kind of funny how we're doing that. But yeah, so um. Oh, a uh, side note. Yeah. Because we're still we're on the Kardashians somehow. Uh. Rob Kardashian, the son of Robert Kardashian on the show, just got engaged to Black China. I don't know if you. Black China. Hey, good for him. And, and the funny thing is, I think from what I watched on TMZ, that Black China has a kid with Tyga who is dating like one of his sisters. Yeah, who's so dating if they both Kylie got married, Jenner. it could be his stepdaughter and his niece or something at the same time. How crazy that would is be that? so weird. And also, Black China is best friends with Amber Rose. Are these just people who are famous for being Do famous? Do you know who Amber Rose is? I know them from watching TMZ, but I really – they're just like Listen, so Black, chicks who like dated Kanye or something, yeah, right? Yeah, Black China's best friends with Amber Rose. Amber Rose dated Kanye for years before Kim, and they absolutely despise each other. So imagine how that wedding's going to go. I mean, she's going to try to have I her – I smell birthday. ratings. Oh, man, it's going to be bad. Did you hear the other – I can't believe I'm saying this – the other Kardashian news. What? <laughs> Cocktails with Chloe was canceled. Oh. Shocker. Actually, yeah, I guess... it got good, pretty good ratings, though, didn't it? Yeah, it fell off pretty quickly. I read the article very quickly. It's something along the lines of she was having problems with the producers wanted and they fought and they just said, screw it and canceled it. Whatever. You know what? Yeah, if you want to figure out more, go Google it. I don't want to talk about these morons. Okay. <laughs> next. Yeah, next. Did you get a chance to uh, watch any of the uh, Below Deck Med <laughs> uh, preview episode from a week or two ago? No. So it basically just like a primer. I, I thought it was starting this week. I guess it starts. But Chef Ben's starts, on, right? Yeah, well, that's where he was the beginning of the regular show last season. Uh, They're filming concurrently. So 
I want to say it's like the first week of May or so. Maybe when I'm visiting you, for all I know. But it really just kind of introduced you to the cast, gave you an idea of like what's going to play out, you know, who the characters are. I don't remember their names, obviously, other than Ben. But you know, like this is the slutty one. This is the fun one. This is the strict <laughs> one. This is the douchey one. The hot one. But they, they really tried really, really too hard to push this whole med thing. Like, it, it reminded me of, like, 10 years ago when the OC came out. Like, oh, welcome to the OC. And, like, people are like, no one calls it the OC. If you're in the Mediterranean, are people like, oh, yeah, we're in the med? No, I don't, says that? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't see this picking up with Americans. I mean, we'll like it for a second, but it's not going to catch on like the OC. No, no. But I think the show itself could catch on. I mean, oh, it's, it's going to be great. Just, it's going to be great. It's basically just everything you like about the regular one. Yeah, just foreigners, British people, French people who probably have a little bit of an accent. Maybe some people from like the Vatican or Cannes or whatever. The Vatican? What do you mean? The Pope's there? <laughs> I would Monaco, like have... Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. I'm just gonna name all the really obscure, like small countries. Maybe ask people from Africa. Maybe some people from Swaziland show up. Is that what you're saying? Okay, no, that's all not right. what I was saying. Oh, anyway. No. <laughs> Anyways, you know, if you from what I can tell from this little thirty minute clip here, if you like regular below deck, you're gonna like this. And it shouldn't be that different because sure there are some staples on below deck, but a lot of it changes every year. You know, you have a lot of new characters every year. So if you can deal with that in the regular show, what's the problem here? There's no problem. Um, There's no problem. Know Carla's gonna be watching because she got us hooked on below deck. Well, you know, Carla is one of our biggest fans there. She tweeted us the other night asking if we're watching Southern Charm. And I said, you know, we, we discussed it, what, like a year ago maybe, and you said you saw it and it was horrible I could not and it's stupid. Get, I watched the first couple episodes. I could not get into it. These people were so bad. I mean, they were worse it does than have normal, okay? <laughs> It has Cameron from the first from the first uh, San Diego Real World season, but anyways, this, our listener Carla said that it was really good. It's gotten better, so I'm like, you know what? I haven't seen an episode. I recorded the first episode of I think the third season. I'm gonna give it a try. And I can't promise I'm gonna stick with it, like like so many of the shows I watch for this podcast. But I'll give it a try. Okay. <sighs> All right. All right. Let's you, end with a couple. Do you want to do Party Down South? Oh, I, I totally skipped over Party Down South. I'm so sorry. Um. Party Down South, I really just briefly wanted to you know, go over what we expect. So the finale is coming this Thursday, tomorrow, probably if you're listening to this. Or it could be today if you're listening to it on Thursday. Um, it's good that it's ending, I think. If it went on another season, I'm pretty sure Boudreaux would drop dead. That dude needs a break. Oh, my God. Does he ever? And I actually went back and watched the first episode of the first season. It was bananas, huh? Did you go back and watch it? No, but I really should. I remember it blew my mind when I first watched I think I told you and Ron about it, but you got to watch this show. You know, it's not – going back and looking at it, it's a great episode, but it's not as crazy as you would think. I mean, the, yeah, they got drunk. Yeah, they passed out. Because you know all these people now. Yeah. And then in the last five years, you know, this kind of stuff just becomes more and more it of is. the norm. It is. so normal. But, shows. you know, it only started in 2014, so this show's literally only been on for two years. Is that true? It seems like it's been on forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just had like three back to back seasons. That was actually the problem, I think. I think I got a little tired of it after I was just on too much. And I didn't have time. Like, oh, we're going on another vacation. I'm like, when did you, when did you leave? <laughs> <laughs> when did you stop being on vacation? <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy. So I have a couple of questions slash predictions that I want you to answer if you can. Sure. Now the show's going to end. Do you think Walt will pull as many women back home that he does on this show? Because he's no. always picking up chicks here. No. You mean the jeans, hat, and the white shirt isn't going to work? I don't know. You know How many more world? years is he going to have that get up? He kind of has to switch it up at some point. Well, in the last episode, he was wearing those skinny jeans. But that really wasn't working for him. Um, is Daddy just going to still be Daddy? Is he going to be basically performing for a TV show that doesn't exist when he's back Daddy home? Daddy will always be Daddy. Yeah, like, yeah so is this, this isn't a character. This is no, who this, this guy is. this is who he was. If you watch the first episode... Of the first season, this is who he is, and he's not apologetic. And you know what I thought was also really interesting? Um, little bit, how she got her name, Tiffany. Tiffany said, oh, you look so small. You're so cute. I'm going to call you Little Bit. She didn't come into the house with that. Name. Really? Yeah. It's, well, you know what? If you watch the episode, Daddy, he was Ryan. He called everybody else Daddy. Yeah, exactly. And then they, they, just, then they stopped that, and he became Daddy. So they so all refused. They're like, why is he calling me Daddy? I don't want to be called Daddy. And then it just kind of stuck. And so he was called Daddy after that. But he, but he knows he doesn't call anybody else Daddy anymore. We especially wonder how much of that was real and how much of it was fake. So he goes, everybody, 
catch it catches on with everybody at first they kind of deny it and they don't want to be called daddy and then they come around to daddy you know, he's going to have a couple things that are going to stick in the American lexicon after this. That, the pretzel, put hot dog in oh, the yeah, pretzel. Oh, yeah, and his beer thing, his beer funnel. Yeah. I love it. His funnels. I mean, I, I hope we have not seen the last of Daddy. You know, I, I like I like everybody on there, but Daddy's, Daddy is, was a breakout yeah. character from me. I mean, he's, he could just be Daddy forever. I love Daddy. All right, next thing. Is Marie going to donate his cut-off American flag shirt to the Smithsonian? <laughs> that dude wears that constantly. Are they going to want it? I don't know. I'm just joking, but I think... You know, Murray's going to go back home with mom and stuff. And, you know, hey, good luck to Murray. First, epi- was- first episode, Murray was wearing essentially a polo. You know, one of those polo t-shirts with the collars? Yeah, yeah. He was all dressed up. And then by the a- end of the season, last season, this season, he essentially was wearing, like you said, cutouts and spandex and yeah, like a, yeah, a onesie or a, 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 a unitard yeah. or something. Well, my last question for you, and this is not so much a prediction. It's, it's a real question. Why can't Maddie get laid? What's, what's going on there? No, it's really... I mean, maybe I should move to the South. Maybe we have a better chance. Maybe we can get her on the podcast and ask her now that the show's over. Yeah, she, she is a friend of the podcast. She follows us. I, I'm thinking maybe she's being very aggressive and there are cameras around. And, you know, that guy was making out with her. And then... That guy was hot, second. though. I don't think you realize... Well, you're a dude. But he was really <laughs> good-looking. And I don't think he wanted to take it to the next level because of the cameras. You're right. Yeah, I, I think you sober yourself up for like a hot sec. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not ready to bang this chick on camera. <laughs> you know, because that, that lives forever. It really yeah, I'll does. make out with her and I'll push her away. But I'm going to walk away. I don't want anything to do with that. So then I guess the last thing I have to say on Party Down South to you is, uh, what do you think else we're going to see in this last episode? And are, are you sad? Are you sad to see it go? To be honest, it hasn't hit me yet. Um, I would like to see Tiffany not be so angry and maybe go to anger management class. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see Boudreaux just kind of fade into the distance so he can. For his own good. Yeah, I just want him to just kind of fade out. Uh, Daddy, we want more of Daddy, obviously. T- um, not Tiffany. Uh, what's her name? Lauren. Lauren yep. needs to just admit that, you know, maybe she can get a little crazy, but she wasn't as crazy as everybody else. She she was a little, I guess, on the normal side, which made her freak out seem funnier, I guess, when they happened because uh, – but she she and Tiffany kind of got together in the last season or two and kind of, had some, yeah. of that, had some of that mean girl stuff going yeah. on for a little bit, I think. Yeah, I don't know. And Hot Dog as well. I don't think that was kind of the greatest way to kind of keep keep the Party Down South franchise, you know, revitalized and going, so – but we did have a tentative uh, interview scheduled with Lauren like a year ago, and it just never happened. So maybe, you know, we, we have we have she follows us, Maddie follows us, Lyle. We just get a whole but bunch I, of people. But I on also there with worry us. that great, maybe they will want to come on the podcast. But I think they do it. They they did a really big disservice to themselves while the show was on by not doing as much. Uh, press and media like podcasts and television things like that whereas Kayla from MTV is really taking it upon herself to put her name out there and to kind of build that brand for herself I think they should have done that more and I don't I I don't think they did yeah we know it's cool to do because our you know our boy Michael Duke came on here and it was no problem with the CMT and stuff so you know we'll we'll reach out maybe give like a month or so once the real world hits them that they're not going to be on TV anymore or at least in this in this format maybe we'll you know, have them come on and talk about their experiences. Yeah, I just and... wish. I mean, I we should have probably told them this a little bit long before, but now because <laughs> now it's just a little bit too late. But your fifteen minutes is only going to be going on for so long. You kind of have to make sure you're selling yourself. We know Little Bit has her tanning oils and tanning lotions that she sells under the name little bit and she's kind of capitalized on that so i think they need something more than that yeah or just or just go back to your real life because you know it's sad now when you have like jay wow and snooki who were on top of the world you know seven six years ago now you like, they have these shows on but does anybody really give a crap I'm are they still on, on the TV real? i they have like some show somewhere i don't know i mean i maybe it got canceled i don't watch but that's the whole point yeah is that there was a time where that was appointment viewing i could not miss watching the Jersey Shore of those people. Nah, who cares? They're annoying. I don't like them. And you want to either stick around while people love you and then fade out and not be the person who stays at the party too long, you know? That's kind of why Seinfeld went out on top, right? Yes. It's like in that episode where George 
gets everybody joking. He goes, all right, I'm out, and just leaves work. <laughs> All right, we gotta we we'll get into the end here. We got a couple just quick notes to put on you here. Fear the Walking Dead returns this Sunday. Uh, we were all kind of like, eh, you know, a little lukewarm on that first season, but you know, I'm were we? It. I thought it was shot. awesome. I love Frank Delane. You're like obsessed with that dude, but by the yeah. end of the season, we were kind of like, eh, I don't really want to cover this. Who cares? Were we? I feel like I was so in it. Go back and listen to it. Okay, I swear I'll to go God. back and listen to our podcast about how it was a snooze fest. <laughs> Well, because the whole point of it was going to be about the breakdown of society. Yeah. And then it was just like one day society was just broken down. I'm like, what? Like, it just happened kind of fast. Yeah. Um, Game of Thrones returns. Game of, Th Game of Thrones returns April 24th. I'm trying to get your fiance, Ron, to come on here once a week and do recaps with me. You got to work on that. Make it happen. No, not everybody likes to hear their voice and feels comfortable in front of a mic. It's, it's like the biggest show in the world. We got to cover Is it? Is it bigger than Walking Dead? It's if you take per capita of the people who have AMC on their TVs and the people who have HBO, I think it is. It's definitely the most talked about. Bigger than I mean, Breaking Bad? Yes. Breaking Bad only was big towards the last season or so because people caught up with it on, on DVR or on uh, Netflix and stuff. Bigger than I'm Seinfeld? You, I'm not saying ever. You know, it's not like I'm MASH or something. It's like the biggest show. You're like, it's the biggest thing in the world. It's, you know, you know, there's a podcast we talked about for what used, used to be the Hollywood Protectors on Grantland. Now it's uh, the Watch Podcast. They had, they did a thing a couple weeks ago, like if you had a championship belt, and it was like which TV show has a championship belt at any given time. <laughs> They're like, as soon as as uh, Game of Thrones is on, they have the championship belt. I mean, it's if you like the show, just just get just get Ron on. <laughs> I know you don't watch it, but just get him on. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on back. him. It sounds yeah, like yeah. a dirty it's, joke. You, Let's get your mom back. You have to have my mom on this podcast. Go, Ron, it's either you or my mom. And come on. You know, I love my mom, but I want Ron on here. I love my mom and Ron. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the challenge, Rivals 3, is going to return May 4th, the day before I go down and see you guys in Austin. So maybe, you know, if we can figure out how to do it, we can do a live recording uh, talking about the first episode of the challenge while I'm down there. We will. And we can wear bags on our heads and just do a live periscope or something. <laughs> People know what we look like already. Do they? Not really. We, we mean you. You posted a million pictures of yourself at the at the Big Brother thing the other day, and we have our holiday picture. They know what we look like. Yeah. Anyways, um, the challenge three. It's going to be opposite sex this this time. So it's so it's the rivals. But in the past, it's been rivals of the same sex. I think this time it's you, know, you have like I think it's like a ringer. You have Johnny Bananas. And um, are we doing a preview podcast for this? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's let's not talk about this. Let's do a preview podcast in maybe a week or two. You know, the, the week it comes out, we can get it out there and talk about it there. You know, why why should, why blow my load now? We can just save it. For <laughs> okay, that. that's just dirty. Hands up, you know above I, your belt. Come on. You know what I meant. So, uh, all right. You know, it, it's been over a week since we got a podcast out. So I'm, I'm glad this is a nice long yeah, podcast. We didn't cover we Survivor. Cover... Well, because so the next episode's happening. It's over right now. Just finished, so I, we shouldn't talk about the episode that is already two weeks old at this point. So maybe you know I'm going to Atlantic City this weekend to give a give a presentation at a conference, but I'm back on Don't fail. Saturday. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm having listen. To this. I'm having a great time because I don't work for these people. It's, it's my old employers, so I'm like a free agent. So I'm putting things in there. I'm talking about how to be an advocate and how to lobby and saying like, uh, it's like if you ever watched G.I. Joe when you were younger, they said knowing is half the battle. And much like when fighting Cobra, knowing in half the battle is also the most important thing when you're talking to members of Congress. Wow, and, that uh, sounds pretty put, deep. I'm putting some uh, some lost quotes in there. You know, uh, like Jack said in Lost, live together or die alone. Build coalitions. You know, anyways, doesn't matter. I'm going to be Jesus back here. That, but Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna be back here for Sunday. If you're around, we can do a quick, like maybe micropod and just discuss the discuss maybe the finale of uh, of uh, Party Down South and Survivor and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's do a micro on Sunday. That right, sounds good. All right. Well, now you can go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. But where else can you go? Facebook.com/slash Bring Me Your Torch or Twitter.com/slash Bring Me Your Torch without the H. No H. And now you can find us on iHeartRadio, but I don't want to keep saying now you can find us. So now we're on iHeartRadio, and they just had the iHeartRadio Music Awards on Sunday. I actually think you can just say, and we're on. You know, say now we've been on there for so long. It's been a couple months now. Yeah, so, yeah find us on iHeartRadio. <laughs>
You can find us on <laughs> you love iHeartRadio. You can find us on iTunes where we've been getting more and more uh, reviews. So thank you very much to our listeners who are doing really? that. Really? Are they bad? Yeah. No, so far the one that I think came in from Raven and Party Down South Two is the only negative one on there. I, I love I'm sure how you her. think that's still her. We were talking trash about her, and then she like I think liked our podcast, and then all of a sudden we have that a two star review. It, it's her. I know it's her. Oh man, I love that. Um, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on YouTube, on Blueberry, on Stitcher. I, I have a friend who has a, a Droid, and she goes, "How the heck do I listen to podcasts?" I'm like, "Well, it's harder if you're on an iPhone. I can tell you just go to the iPhone app or the iPod app or podcast app, whatever the hell it's called." ITunes but uh, yeah, she da- she downloaded uh, Stitcher and she listened to our uh, interview with Kayla on there, so that was cool. So uh, you do all that stuff. Google us, find us, and then uh, remember, you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.